All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're going to be popping into Photoshop to take a look at how you can blur the background of your photos using the Photoshop Neural Filters setting. So, nowadays, Photoshop through Adobe has got these lovely neural filters underneath a filter and then neural filters that uses Adobe servers and all of their fancy artificial intelligence brains in order to do things so that it makes it a little bit easier for you to add special effects to your photos without having to spend a lot of time doing it manually. In this case, we're going to be adding a depth blur and inside of here, once you select it, you may have to on the right hand side in this little panel tell it to download this filter onto your computer so that you can use it. Just go ahead and click it. It's only like 35 megabytes, no big deal. And then once it's all downloaded, you should be able to toggle it on. And what it's going to do is Photoshop is going to shoot a copy of this photo up to Adobe onto the cloud so that the robot brain can give it a good once over and then decide how and where to add a blur effect so that only your subject or what it thinks is your primary subject is crystal clear. And so I grabbed this kind of HD photo of just a guy standing outside and also another photo that I'll show you when you have to do this manually, how that looks. And uh, so as you can see, it does a sort of okay job. It took a moment uh, to process this on my slower internet connection. But it did an okay job. It got 90% of this guy. It kind of got a little bit of his head blurred here, but it got most of the background except for this piece right here, which you could manually fix yourself using the blur tools that are available in Photoshop. And you've got a few different options to try to adjust that or to edit that. So one of the things you can do is you can increase or decrease the amount of blur in the background to your choosing using this little slider over here. But do note that it does take a moment because Adobe has to take another look at the picture every time you adjust these settings, which I guess they're working on improving the downtime whenever you're messing with these. Uh, and then it gives you a new improved version of your image to kind of take a look. And that's about the amount of blur I actually want. You know, I. I want the, the the main subject here to be our primary concern, and then I want whatever is going on in the background to kind of be blurry so that your main focus is on the person you're taking a photo of. So that looks pretty good. Now, what do we have that we can do to fix this person's face? Well, one of the things we can do is on this little preview image in the right hand panel, we can click on his face to try to make that our primary focus and we'll see what that does to the image preview. What this is doing is Photoshop has actually created a depth map using black and white imagery to try to map out what's important in this image. And sometimes it does a stellar job, but there's gonna usually be a little fixing required, especially when you're talking about automatic tools. So now we have his face and most of his body, but now our foreground is kind of blurry and we lost some of that nice blur in the midground just behind him. But that's all right. And you can kind of just click around here, putting the focal point on different points on the subject or in the foreground to see if you can't find a spot that kind of hits exactly the point that you want. And your mileage will vary on how long this takes. Uh, it'll vary based upon the size of the image, the resolution, and also the speed of your internet. So we're kind of we're kind of zeroing in on a good middle point here. Let's. What happens if we put the focal point at the gentleman's feet? Okay. Well, it looks like if we put the fo the the focus on his feet. We at least get the blur of the background that we want, and I can fix most of the rest of the problems that you see on our subject's body. So that'll be fine. And let's take a look at what the depth map looks like. So it actually did a pretty good job of mapping out our subject's shape, his hat and everything, and the little rumples of his coat. So that's actually pretty cool. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to edit this depth map, but we're going to do it 
inside of the mask layer. So one of the things that we can do with this is once you're happy with the blur strength, the focal length, the focal distance, and all that stuff here, we can actually output this in a couple of different ways. We can make the changes and put this into a new layer. We can just duplicate the main layer that we were on, or we can duplicate the layer and have it masked out with that depth map that we just showed. And that's what I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and duplicate layer masked and we'll click OK. And then boom, we've got most of what we want. You can kind of, if I hit Alt and click on this little picture of our depth map, you can see what Photoshop has done to uh, kind of create the effect that it has. It's a little garbly and a little messy, but for the most part, that hits all the spots that we want. So I'm gonna click on this mask and I'm gonna equip with B our brush and I'm gonna make it a soft round brush and I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. And we're gonna zoom in here with the, let's go with black selected. And we're gonna start to brush in his body a little bit more so he shows up the way that I want him to. So we'll make sure that our opacity or our strength slash flow of our brush is 100%. And now I'm just going to draw around the edges of his body, trying to make sure that the edge is nice and crisp here. And then we're going to suddenly see this start to become closer to what we're looking for in a nice depth of field image. Because if you're really having trouble with this too, go ahead and just look up a nice portrait photography just on Google Images for reference and see exactly what those look like. They've got a, usually a nice crisp line at the edge of the body. The points in between like their arms, if there's a gap, that's blurry in there too. And then the blur in that case usually starts around right behind them. So right where these rocks are, we'll kind of clean up that so that it looks like we have a nice, crisp, defined plane of, of blur where everything behind them is kind of blurry, but everything in the foreground isn't. And then I'll reverse the... I guess it didn't blur right here, but we can fix that ourselves in a moment. So we'll just finish drawing in our subject, kind of drawing out his outline, drawing his hat back in. And really, he, he stops getting blurry from around mid-waist area down, so that's as far as we need to be worried about. And then we can usually, in a lot of these images that I've tested today, you can pretty much ignore a lot of that. Although it does look like he needs a little work on his pant leg edge. So just give it a quick once over to see where he needs some work. And then that's like 90% of the way there. Like if you've backed out of here, and we're just kind of browsing casually on the web, you wouldn't even notice this slightly fuzzy line. To clean that up, we'll just make the brush a little bit smaller and we can just clean that up. And then we'll go down into the hands, up a little bit and boom. This kind of very quickly becomes exactly what you would want in a nice depth of field photo. Now this isn't really an alt, a replacement completely for just taking a nice depth of field on location. So if you feel like you might need that, it would be a good idea just to take a couple extra photos. And you should just go ahead and look up what you need to make a nice depth of field photo. The settings aren't that hard to replicate on location. And then if you just keep that in the back of your mind while you're doing that, you should be fine. But this in a pinch, you know, if you found out that the photographer you're using didn't think about it, or you decide creatively, you and the design team, that you wanted, you know, that nice depth of field photo, this is actually a nice way to do it so you don't have to manually add a depth of field. But I will do a tutorial right after this that kind of showcases that process. So we're just going to make sure that his pant legs are nice and crisp. Really, the thing that you want to avoid is the cheap filter effect look. And what I mean is, one of the things people do is they, they edit these photos in a way that there's like a weird halo effect around their body, 
and let's let me just show you what I'm talking about. So you see how it's kind of like fuzzy here, but it's like crisp up here in weird places and it doesn't seem uniform. That's what I'm talking about. Or, you know, there's like a big chunk here that's like oddly crisp and there's like holes where you would normally expect to see blur or a crisp fine line. So we're just trying to avoid that. So the, the trick is make your brush really small and then edit a really nice, fine, detailed, defined line so that you can avoid that problem. Now it gets to be a little bit of a, a hairy situation when you're talking about like these little weeds here, because then you're like, oh, do I need to like trace out every last one of these little fine lines here? And the answer is probably not. Just leave that a little bit fuzzy. For the casual observer, no one's probably going to notice that. And then once you kind of draw out those nice crisp lines, along his body and his cap and everything. Just being careful not to over trace outside of the lines. Unless you want to, if there's like a specific effect you're going for, by all means. But if you're looking for that nice crisp depth of field, you want the edges of his body to be pretty crisp. Of your subject, just give that a quick little once over. And then boom, there you go. So the tool is nice. It gets you like 90% of the way there. And then I can go over here. Where's my blur tool? I can go over here if I want to just do some spot touch-ups here and just do a little bit of blurring. We can duplicate this back layer because it's kind of bleeding through in a funny way. And there, that that's like 99% of the work already done. And looking over here, this whole tutorial took around 10-ish minutes. So just from start to finish, this is actually a pretty quick process. And if you had to spend like another five, 10 minutes to just make sure that those lines are really crisp, you know, that his hands are properly detailed and outlined, you're not missing like a crease in his pant leg or none of these rocks. Like here's a little spot that's being a little hinky. I can just clean up around this rock so that it's nice and crisp. And then boom, that is pretty much half of the way, if 90% of the way, ready to like put into whatever print ad that you want. Like, boom, check out our new like blazer jacket with little floofy bits for REI. Bing, bang, boom, ready to rock. So that has been a brief look at Adobe Photoshop's new depth mapping blur tool through the neural filters. It's a great tool to quickly get most of the way towards a nice depth of field background. And then through a few minor edits, you can get the rest of the way there in just a few minutes. So I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions about this process, please let me know. And until next time, I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you guys and gals next time for a new Photoshop tutorial.